Cessna over the threshold, coming up on the white dot, Adderby on the white dot, left turn first available. I got a high wind coming up on about a half mile final, clear to land, Adderby on. Traffic on the left face, you're following the Cessna down, low off your left. Square it up just a little bit, and then we're going to get you in. Start your descent, though. Start your descent on the base. Traffic on final, give me follow on base. Base traffic, start turning toward the numbers now. High wing coming up on quarter mile final, take it all the way down to the green. Cessna taxiing on the green, expedite down to the next hard surface. Get me some speed, there you go, 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 go fast. This is going to be good. I got traffic on the mile final. You're following traffic ahead and to your right. High wing coming up on the threshold. Take it all the way down to the green dot. Five Charlie Sierra, two mile final. A mile final. Turn north. Turn north, and we're going to just make you. Uh, we're going to bring you back around. Jet traffic's coming up on about a mile and a half final runway. Niner clear to land. Okay. All right. Let's, 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 listen up, guys. If you're on final for runway nine, I want you to offset to the left. I got a jet that's landing on runway nine. The jet's cleared to land runway nine. If you can make it. If not. Just continue straight ahead. It looks like you're going around for the jet. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, we had one right in front of us, sir. Dragger. Let's see. Well, we got a tricycle. Tricycle, put it down. Tricycle, put it down. Tricycle, put it down. Tail dragger. Down to the green uh, green dot, then a left turn. Short final here. You click land on nine all the way to the white dot. Go down to the white dot. Find somebody to follow out here. Canard, just come to the runway, and I might have to just send you around. That'll be fine. And for the jet, you just want to stay in this pattern, or you want to go back out for an instrument approach? Stay in a pattern. Charlie's here. All right, just stay with me here for a minute. And my tail dragger, and eh, let's see, over the numbers, go down to the green. Can and Canard's going to have to go around. Canard, go around. Canard, go around. Canard, right. go around. And my uh, high wing here over the runway, keep it airborne. Keep it airborne. You do not descend. Do not descend. you got a fast guy behind you. Do not descend. My okay, Here you go. Keep it airborne. Keep it airborne. As soon as the guy behind you gets uh, slowed down, I'm going to put you down. So keep it airborne. The uh, one that just passed the white dot, make a left turn on the hard surface. All right, my uh, high wing tail dragger, you can put it down now. You can put it down now. And Charlie Sierra, let me get you about a mile off. Let's see, Charlie Sierra, I lost. There you are. Make a left hand turn. I'll try to resequence you here on the down ones. We'll see how it looks. Short final, you're clear to land runway nine on the white dot. Clear to land on the white dot. There you go. And the tricycle left on the hard surface and follow the flagman. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being part of the show. And let's see, just find somebody to follow out the, uh, follow on the final. And as you get close to the runway, if it's not going to work, we're going to send you around and then try to resequence you. Now, who else got sent around that's not back on the downwind? The Canard? Yeah, Canard. All right, Canard, there's a golf stream up there that went around, too. I just lost sight of him. But you're going to make kind of a left-hand turn and stay low. I think Charlie's here once we're out, dude. 3,200. Okay, that'll be fine. Just maintain VFR. I don't know what else is up there above you. Probably most everybody's down here. So just make a left-hand turn. We'll try to get, uh, try to get you back here. Can our uh, jet in tight? Okay, the RV, maybe an RV-10, whatever, here on final. Keep your speed up and go all the way down to the... Uh, aim for the green dot for me. Uh, actually, keep your speed up. There's a guy behind you. Aim for the green dot. I'm sure that's plenty of room for you to land on runway 9. You're supposed to land on runway 9. Number two... You're going to go down to the white dot. Follow the white dot. Actually, you know what? That's 1,500 feet. You're going to land at the white dot. The uh, spacing looks adequate here. Two guys on final. You're kind of tight there. Keep each other in sight, and you're going to uh, aim for the white dot. If it's not going to work, we'll do. Uh, we'll come up with a plan B. We might have to send you around. The second guy behind you yeah, out there in about a two-mile final. Are you slow enough to be able to follow that guy in front of you? You need to go around. Well, I probably shouldn't ask that because I had about five guys to answer me, so I should know better than that. After 35 years, you would think, right? All right, so uh, let me see. The guy who's number one, it's number one. What kind of airplane is he? An RV type. All right, RV type. Keep it airborne for me. Keep it airborne. And I got a fast guy behind you. The number two guy over the uh, uh, trees there. Go ahead and put it down on the numbers. Put it down on the numbers. My first guy just coming up on the numbers. At the, uh, over the grass at the numbers. T-minus one minute and counting. Hello. One. Hello. How are you Hello. doing? Hello. 
Welcome, everybody. Thank you very, very much for joining us. And uh, what have we got tonight? I'm getting a clipboard because there's just so much stuff going on. I, keep <laughs> um, I hope, hope you enjoyed the Oshkosh RT there. We've got that, uh, we, we play that every week, but a, a little special thing this week because it was really, really similar to the Sowell RT, isn't it? During the LA8. No, very, very, very close. Very close. Great. So what have we got? Simon, uh, Simon's here with his little weather quiz and a bit of weather for uh, the weekend when we can't go flying, usually. Uh, and then we've got news, as usual, with Dave, who's going to drone on. And, and I'm saying that in the nicest possible way, Dave, um, <laughs> given some of the stories. Um, <laughs> then, we can, then we're going to get Steve Slater, the LAACA CEO, not CAA, uh, to take the uh, right stuff quiz, and hopefully he'll do really well on that. We've got a couple of new questions, thanks to Matt Deard and scoring 100% last week. Um, Ed is then going to talk to um, Steve about all, all things LAA and all things aviation, and uh, you've got a chance. There were some questions in the forum which we're hoping to put, and yep. there were some questions on here if you want to put them. If we've got time, we'll do those. Then we'll give him his right stuff score, see how he does on that. We're moving on to Fantasy Hangar. And after Fantasy Hangar, we've got what's been cancelled this week. And uh, then we've got a whole bunch of other stuff with Johnny reminding us. But stick with us today because there's also a very exciting announcement at the end of the show. So uh, with that, I'll put my clipboard down. I'll pick my mouse hand up and I'll hand over to Simon. Simon? Take it away. Okay, even all, I hope you're doing uh, well. We've got a wintry outlook for you in just a few moments. But before we do, a totally useless quiz for you about weather. I want to know, where do we derive the word Volmet from? So, you know, Volmet's reports that we pick up on radio in the air from various different airfields. But where do we derive the word Volmet from? No going to Google. Let me know and I'll uh, give you the answer at the end of the forecast. As I say, quite a wintry forecast for um, this weekend. This is the chart for Saturday. And uh, what it's showing you is strong easterly winds across the country, low pressure down towards the south. This is what we call a polar continental uh, air mass, and it brings in cold easterly winds. So many eastern parts of the country are going to be seeing um, some snow on Saturday. Western areas tending to fare best of all. And I've got a different charting for you today. This is uh, model weather. So uh, the model produces an actual forecast itself of what weather will be like. Now, you don't need me to tell you that the blue stars on here are snow. So watch where that snow is on Saturday down these eastern coasts. Now, look at the chart for Sunday. Still got this easterly flow. Still got low pressure off towards the south. We've got these fronts kind of tied in with it. And all you need to know about fronts, really, is that they're areas of cloud and precipitation. And typically, when we get an easterly flow such as this, polar continental, you can work on cloud bases of about 1,500 to 2,000 feet. Notice most of the precipitation, the green bits here, off towards the east. Western areas faring better, but a real scrappy easterly flow, the isobars, quite close together telling us that it is going to be quite a windy one on Sunday and a darn cold one too. Uh, that is the uh, model forecast weather for Sunday and now look what's happened. All that snow has spread its way southwards through the country. The more stars they are, there are the heavier the snow is and you can see that most of those stars are down eastern sides of the country. Western areas tending to see less stars and tending to be better overall. If we could fly, west would be best this weekend. So as you can see there, winter draws on. So did you uh, guess then uh, my little quiz there? As I say, totally useless information for you. But where do we derive the word Volmet from? I know Ian's going to get this one right. So I'm going to give you the answer now before he chips in there. So we derive Volmet from uh, the French words for uh, flight, which is Vol, and also uh, Meteo. So that gives us Volmet, flight weather. There you go. What about that? Totally useless information to not amaze your friends with. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. You too. See ya. Bye. See ya. See Cheers. Ya. Bye. Dave, give us some right. news. Yes, in the news tonight, um, we start with the sad news that uh, Dr. Robert, Robert Fleming, who started the Vulcan to the Sky Trust, um, has died. You, know, you may remember that, uh, that he, he, he bought the aircraft, the XH558, from being basically a gate guardian. Uh, it last flew in 1993. And he, he put it back in the air. And we had eight years of glorious sounds and displays at air shows around the country. Now, um, have, you, have you seen the uh, seen the Vulcan display? I'm sure you have, Johnny. I have indeed. 
Yeah, I was um, very fortunate to see it a number of times, including the legendary Kev Ruman's take off at the 2015 air tattoo. Um, but you know what what he put together defined a generation of air shows for people my age. We grew up grew up with that aircraft, and it was it was incredible. So it's sad to see it go, and it's sad to hear of his passing. Yeah, you grew up with it second time round or first time round. <laughs> Sadly for Johnny, that'll be first time round. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, on, well, okay. Well, okay. Uh, Ro well, yeah. Robert's uh, legacy of the Vulcan to the Sky Trust is is carries on actually because they're planning to use XH five five eight as a centerpiece in a new Vulcan experience hangar, telling the story of the Vulcan, the RAS V Force in which he served, and uh, the whole bit about the Cold War. So, yeah, it's. Um, Sad to see him go, but uh, his legacy lives on. Now, we have to move on because the next bit is a bit more controversial, and that is about drones, these dreaded drones. And the CAA has now approved the this this bit of temporary danger area. It is running from Oban down to a place called Lochilped. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. And there's also a spur going from Oban up towards Mull. And this is uh, to operate some drones um, by a company called Skyport. And they, uh, this is one of them. And you see that bit at the bottom? That, uh, that's where they're going to put the medical samples that they're going to fly back from, uh, from you know, doctor's surgeries to be uh, analysed. Are you uh, sure that's not a suppository? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's somewhat large, if it is. Yes. You think it, uh, we think it, you say it. Anyway. Uh, and this was, uh, I'm right in saying this was the first um, ACP that arrived. It was already in work when everyone got worked up about the um, the the Oban Mull one, wasn't it? So this one's been approved by the CAA, and it was it was already close to being done. This when... was such a great consultation that they sent an email to the LAA uh, to a wrong address at the LAA. I think Steve will probably have more to say on that later, but they they managed to not consult. I think with with many people on that. Yes. Spooky. It's yeah. kind of kind of indicative that um, these things are going to go through, so we just have to we have to mount the best possible battle. Anyway, the other bit about drone news is the RAF are having this. Uh, I'll bring it in a big a big drone. This is it. This is the General Atomic Sky Guardian. It's big. It's uh, got a seventy nine foot wingspan. That's about the size of a, a medium sized business jet. Um, it's pretty fast. It's got a great payload. It can deliver death, or it can just watch people <laughs> being killed. Uh, that's obviously not the uh, that's obviously not the RAS intention when it's running its uh, test trials this uh, this summer. Uh, but they've applied for two great big chunks of airspace around RAF Waddington and RAF Lossiemouth, and um, uh, anyway, that's going through at the moment. So, um, anyone? It's also going to appear in air shows, apparently, as well. But, uh, which opens us up to the idea of instead of uh, instead of aircraft spotters, drone spotters. What? Uh, what? Who are who are drone spotters? Is, is are all the skyports all the skyports going drones going to turn up at air shows and watch the bigger drone flying, or or are there, are there going to be drones on the ground? Are all the rumbas and motor mowers and stuff all the robots? <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, this is this is going to be pilotless aircraft turning up to visitorless air, air, air shows. shows. Basically. Yeah, yes. yeah. Is it, is it, uh, did did we not get the the memo on 2021? This this is not a good start, really, is it? It's, it's not. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I just don't think what a, a drone air show critic is like. I feel like. <laughs> That display was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh dear. Right, I think uh, this leads us on to a couple of things you want to say. You would, you've heard from the CAA, Ian. Yeah, I've been chasing up the CAA on a couple of things this week, a little bit varied things. Starting off, there was um, a while ago, I wrote to the CAA. I, in fact, I whinged about the CAA in the magazine um, when we were talking about electronic conspicuity. It's something called CAP 1391, which is what all of the devices are under. And a simple change to CAP 1391 would en enable those devices capable to output something called SDA1. Now, that's all really boring and technical and stuff, and you don't really need to, to, to remember that part. But the plus part of that is if they only did that, then all of the aircraft out there with TSO'd 
traffic receivers, the, the Cirruses, the BizJets, the RAF and their grobs and stuff, would be able to see them. And at the moment, they can't. And it's just one simple little text change that the CAA could do that would make it done overnight. It would be really, really easy. And, and there's, there's no disadvantage, but there's a big safety advantage. So I don't know why they haven't done it. I, I really, really don't know. I asked them again, and I got a thing back saying, well, we're kind of reviewing it, and we hope to do it shortly. So that's a bit, come on, that's a bit rubbish isn't it i nearly said a, ro a rude word there um then 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 i asked them about the, the recent thing going on with medicals the the pilot medical declaration the copy changed on that recently and it kind of the the alleviation that was there for sub 2000 kilogram stuff which is basically uh, driving license stuff disappeared so a whole bunch of people who've made use of that uh are finding themselves double grounded at the moment if that's what you could call it in, in this times and i got a i got a statement for the ca which i won't read exactly because it's a little bit dull um, and, and very regulatory, but it effectively says uh, we published some new stuff. Um, well, we're currently considering the changes, but basically due to a number of inquiries raised from the GA community since this change, we're currently considering these changes as a priority and we'll publish further information in due course. So hopefully that will get sorted out. Then there's a whole load of other stuff, which is uh, all to do with, um, what's that one to do with? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, that's to do with all of the, the licenses, the SSEA, the MPPL stuff. They kind of, there, was, there was a date in April 2018 that, that was kind of a cutoff date that's made it very difficult for a whole bunch of people to, to move forward. And I really don't know why the CA had just not fixed that years and years ago. And then finally, finally, with all these bloody ACPs going on at the moment, the CA came out with their new CAP 1616. This is how we're going to do airspace. We're really, really, really considerate. And no, it's rubbish. It's kind of so bloody vague and useless. And at the same time, there's stuff, there's stuff in, it in, in some of the ACPs to do with the drone. They decided it wasn't appropriate. Oh, we're not going to... Here's our nice new thing, but we're not going to bother with that. But not, it's rubbish. The CA, and I'm sorry, I said this two or three months ago, and I really mean it now. The CA need independent oversight, particularly on airspace. The stuff they're doing is substandard, and they seem to be hiding from us. So come on, CA, put someone forward. Come and explain it to us. Come and explain what you're doing. Come on the live stream next week, the week after, whenever you can. We'll make time for you. Come And we won't shout or anything. We'll be nice. We'll just ask questions. But give us your side of this, because from here, it looks rubbish. Come along. Join us. Thank you. Over. Sorry, Dave. And, and That's okay. And when you turn up, just remember to bring your tin hat. That's it. And, so, uh, some, oxygen, and some oxygen for Ian. Uh, <laughs> a few things in the comments. Keir Williams says, Ian's acting as the uh, ombudsman that the CAA need. Um, Andrew Kennedy says, top rant. And uh, Peter Satchwell says, isn't this AOPA's role? <laughs> well, well, good question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So moving on quickly, because time's ticking away. Um, the, the last bit of the news is about uh, hangar homes. Now, a chap called Peter Day, an architect, has been trying to get permission to build some hangar homes at various airfields, but he's tried very hard at Solent down in the, uh, on, on the south. And he came up with this fantastic, to us, it looks like a great plan. You know, there are hangar homes. They go onto an airfield and you, you come in from the street as normal, go out the back in your airplane. What, to, what can be wrong with that? Well, the people who run the airfield, Fairham Council, don't like it. And they've objected all the way. They've taken it all the way to the Secretary of State. And unfortunately, Peter's appeal was lost. Uh, he, he, he's been turned down and there's no, nowhere else for him to go. You have to kind of wonder why no one wants these because you know they uh, they they look they look quite good. They use a bit of land. They make they are expensive houses, that's for sure. But um, they're not doing any harm, and they make good use of the airfield. You have to wonder whether somebody doesn't want these hangar homes, which have got guaranteed use of a runway, mm. because they don't want to guarantee use of that runway. Mm. This is the case possibly at uh, what's happening at Hapney yes. Airport as it used to be known, now known as Wolverhampton, you know, perhaps nobody really wants hangar homes there either because they make use of the runway and protect it forever after. Uh, so, Dave, you're, 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 you're far too young to be that cynical. The fact that Wolverhampton Galactic Spaceport is owned by a <laughs> property development company has got nothing to do with the fact that they don't want to keep the runway forever. No, I'm sure. that's right. That's <laughs> right. And the yeah. fact that another company called Thatcher and Research wants to build a car test track at a at a, a very good, vibrant GA airfield, which is yeah. Retford Gamston. The fact that they're being you know they're, that's not being denied either. Ugh, 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's go. Now it's time for the Right Stuff quiz. Over to oh. you, Ian. Okay, Right Stuff quiz. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Stephen Slater. Hey. Hello, Steve. How are hey, you doing? How are you doing? Good, Steve. Yeah, good. Thank you. I'm just going to remove a few people to tidy things up, and then I'll, I'll add back in. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, you'll okay. shortly be talking to Ed, who's got lots and lots of good questions, I'm sure. For anyone who don't know, Steve is the uh, chair uh, chairman or MD or CEO? CEO. CEO of the LAA, and he, he's here to take the right stuff quiz mainly and then to talk about some other things. Did you enjoy this Cywell RT at the beginning? Uh, it sounds a little bit like Jeff Bell on on Cywell uh, information, doesn't it? But uh, I, I've got to say, I've, I've, that is the one unticked thing on my bucket list is going to Oshkosh. I've always been too busy midsummer. I've never had enough money. One of these days, I've got to get myself to uh, to the AAA. I would like. I would say, well, why don't you come this year? But I, I'm I'm not mm. 100 sure it's going to take place this year. Um, but anyway, why don't you come next year? You're on. Okay, excellent. Are you ready for? Do you know any? How much do you know about the Right Stuff Quiz? Um, I've sort of got an idea of it. I saw it a couple of weeks ago. I promise okay. to be a bit quicker. Okay, you have to be quick. So are you ready? Here you come with the questions. Uh, first thing that comes into your mind, please. Uh, north up or track up? North up. Excuse me. That was that was, that was a hint. Uh, paper chart or tablet? I prefer both, but uh, I still ca I carry a paper chart all the time and a blog. Which one? Oh, man. Composite aluminium or wood? Go through it, controlled airspace, or around it? Uh, around it. The only thing in my aeroplane that squawks is me. Glass or steam? Glass. Side by side or tandem? Tandem. Although, there again, mine, mine's a single seater. Three. Um, canard or biplane? Biplane. Rutan or Van Grunsven? Rutan. Cub or Champ? Cub. Gyro or Weight Shift Microlite? Difficult one, Gyro. Gyro, great. Thank you very much. I will go away and I will um, do those sums. And <laughs> right now I'll hand you over to Ed, who's going to have a chat to you while I go and do the sums and decide how much right stuff you've got. Oh, no. <laughs> Flyer right stuff, that is. <laughs> he does love his quiz. Right. So, uh, so as as Ian said, welcome. Thanks for coming on to the uh, to the live stream, Steve. Um, I'm right to say that you've been uh, CEO at the LEA at uh, LEA LAA since uh, September 2015, haven't you? That's it. Yes, coming on six years. Ah, uh, fantastic. And uh, more importantly, I know you're a serial collector of light aircraft. What's the current tally? Uh, um, four, not including the glider. Uh, okay, well, which ones are those? Because you've got some interesting, interesting machines, haven't you? Yeah, well, I've got the one I'm flying. Well, I would be flying is uh, Airy Mouse, the the first of the post-war Curry Watts. Um, I'm just coming to the end of a lengthy rebuild on a J3 Cub. Um, Matt Boddington and I, of course, rebuilt the BE2C replica that sadly had an accident in in September. There's yep. a Taylor, there's a Taylor monoplane project lurking in a shed somewhere in the Midlands. And uh, uh, sitting in a glider trailer near Aylesbury is a Grunau Baby too. Wow! Oh, Grunau Baby, that's a lovely glider. A, a, a bit of woodwork to do on that. Well, actually, that one's the. It, it, it only needs time, time and me to get get, get it flying, really. And of course, you must have plenty of that. No, <laughs> one of the one of the downsides of my of, of the job at the LAA is I've done ever less flying each year. I think I'm, last year, okay, it was COVID, but I was down to about fifteen hours. Yeah. More importantly, all these aeroplanes, how many does Mrs. Slater know about? All of them. In fact, she made a comment not so long ago, why have we got four aeroplanes and you're still looking for one to fly? And my first thought was she'd forgotten the glider. Ah, good. Excellent work. There's, so clearly there's some science there. So if anyone's to learn anything tonight, it's have so many that your wife forgets some of them. Um, that's possibly. She did have a sense of humour failure when I put them on a fleet insurance because it was cheaper. Wow. Well, saving money. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, so obviously we got you on. We spoke to the flyer community and um, uh, we asked we asked them for their questions to put to you. Um, so a bunch of people wrote in on the forum. So I'm just going to run through some of those. Uh, some are tied up together. Uh, some are separate. Um, so uh, first of all, there was a discussion about um, the LAA finances, um, some of which I know you began to answer. Uh, I'll raise a couple of things, though. Uh, the pipster asked, uh, what strategic plans or policies are in place or being developed for the use of surplus association funds to benefit um, LA, LA members? Yes, well, we actually did outline that quite clearly, um, both at the AGM and uh, earlier in the summer in the LAA magazine. But the, the basis is we did amass uh, some funds, just over a million pounds, about 1.2 million to be precise, uh, in, over the last few years. And in 2018, 20, well, sorry, 2019, we made the decision, the board decided that instead of requiring that I show a small surplus of about 2% on turnover, that I'd be allowed to create a budget which would generate uh, a lower, uh, in fact, a, a deficit, a planned deficit. And for the last couple of years, we have uh, employed additional engineering staff because quite a few of our engineering staff are reaching close to retirement age now. So we brought in two new graduate engineers who've been learning the detail of uh, working in uh, the design and engineering element. Uh, we brought in another uh, senior design engineer, Ben Sison, who joined us. So we've been actually carrying a couple of people over establishment over the last couple of years uh, so we can actually then plan uh, the uh, the future. And the best thing we can invest in at the moment is actually invest in the people who are working in LAHQ, getting the, uh, the mods uh, processed. And even with lockdown, the other thing we invested in, we invested quite significantly in some new technology, which gave us home working. And uh, basically, we put everything on the cloud rather than sitting on servers. Right. And right. Um, that's actually meant that when we did have to go into the lockdowns, we've been able to keep all our staff employed. We haven't furloughed anybody because we still need them to provide the member service. Cool. So that's where we've invested the money. We've got a longer term plan as well, a strategic plan. Most of that got thrown into chaos by COVID, of course. And yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, there has been a member slowdown. We're back to 2018 member levels from where we were. We were on a steady climb for the last four years. Uh, that tailed off. It dipped dramatically at the start of the first lockdown, and then it steadily recovered. But we are still probably about forty thousand pounds down on revenues uh, in comparison with previous years, and that's contributed again to us having to dip a little bit more into our reserves. Yeah. On the um, on the subject of funding, uh, Widebody asks about the Armstrong Isaacs PPL bursary. As the DLA is DTO, surely cost-effective PPLs could be available or possible. Um, I'd like to have a chat with him a little bit more on that and see how he thinks that could be realistically created. Our DTO, of course, is to cover the CRIs who um, operate on the pilot coaching scheme, offering PPL renewals and, and strip uh, ratings and things like that, not ab initio training. But if he has a suggestion on how that might work, I know he's an LAA member, so he knows where to find me. Cool. Uh, but what I would what I would also say there is the Armstrong Isaacs bursaries are designed for people who've already got to first solo but are struggling in that bit where you're doing three legged cross countries and things like that, which cost you a fortune. Mm. And it provides them the money to get through that last bit of their PPL. And that's all being done within the existing flying schools. And certainly I want to support those flying schools, not necessarily set up a cheap competitor. OK. Cool. Um, Cloudhound asks about progress on new, uh, new certification rules for 600 kilogram microlites. The CA said they would consult with industry in the new year on changes to BCAR section ANS, but as yet, no sign. Well, they are, as uh, you may well know, there's already work going on on that. The LAA and the BMAA engineering teams are working in a working group with uh, some people from the UK industry um, and the CAA to actually formulate those whether we use BCAR Section S, whether we use the international standards, um, or an amalgam of them both. Uh, there's a lot of arguments going backward and forward. There's a final meeting, I think, to actually finalise where we are going to be going in the final consultation with that next week. And that also includes some activity on flight crew licensing. But with all the stuff that's been thrown at the CAA by COVID, by the uh, step out of EASA, um, one can understand why they've moved the deadline back a little bit. Maybe I think we're talking about eight, late April, early May for an announcement at the moment. But the announcements are for CAA to make, not me. OK, cool. Um, uh, lots of people are concerned about LAA inspectors. Um, one, uh, So Adrian Hatton, who's an inspector, 
He, uh, he wrote in, he said, uh, he's retiring after 30 years of being an inspector, partly because he thinks LAA should seek new young blood, but also through a fear of litigation. He's wary of the LAA having enough cover to safeguard the inspector communi community um, should he or others be accused of fault. So personally pays for extra cover, but even the cost of his work uh, last year didn't cover his premium costs. Um, yeah, but I, I think he's taking his own premium work for some of the other engineering work he's possibly doing outside of being an LAA inspector. But what I would say, and a lot of engineers do that, yeah. um, we carry, in fact, this year, one of our biggest single increases in expenditure has been liability insurance. And that's effectively employer liability insurance for every one of our 330 inspectors. Um, and that premium has actually gone up to £113,000 per annum. It's one of our single biggest outgoings as our, our insurance premium, mm. and of, of which actually over £80,000 is liability insurance. So we do cover up to £7 million. Um, We also have a process where we actually will represent legally any inspector that's been working on the LAA's behalf if there is a claim made against them or the LAA. Uh, uh, for example, an aeroplane crashes and somebody then says, oh, well, the aeroplane might not have been airworthy and the, the LAA is one of the people we come to sue. And ambulance chasing lawyers have a habit of doing that. They do a shotgun blast for, around about seven or eight different defendants. And we actually represent the, uh, the inspectors in that area. And uh, I, appreciate, I certainly appreciate Adrian's views. I know, he's, as you say, he's thinking about stepping back. I regret losing his knowledge. Um, yeah. because inspectors are much more than somebody going out and saying, yes, it's right or no, it's not. They're yeah. mentors and increasingly important as mentors to those of us who don't have the ability to build a new aeroplane, unlike you, Ed, um, but actually acquire a second-hand um, non-certificated or home-built aircraft. And I know when I first started with my first Luton Minor 15 years ago, 20 years ago, um, if it hadn't been for a very good LAA inspector, I'd have been a liability. And he didn't just teach me about getting the aeroplane through its permit and doing maintenance sign-offs and filling in the logbooks. He taught me how to hand-swing a prop. He gave me a lot of advice on flying a, a, a basic tail dragger. And, uh, you know, I owe those people. And that's what our association is about. It's a community. And it's community help and it's self-help. And I did notice on the website, somebody said, well, I don't have a permit aeroplane. Why should I join the LAA? Because you're a bunch of, a, 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 among a bunch of uh, brothers and sisters who will give you good advice. Um, somebody's just put something up on the bottom of my screen. Has there ever been a win for someone else against an inspector? I'm firmly touching wood and saying not yet. OK. And okay. If, if that would be the case, the, the legal insurance would, uh, would cover a chunk of that. Um, yeah. Our are inspectors, um, it's the inspector community dwindling or are you replacing no, them faster than? We typically lose about 12 inspectors out of our 300 um, each year. And that will increase because we have a, a higher peak in the, the older demographic. Uh, dare I say it's a lot of them who are trained by Her Majesty when they wore blue suits. Um, there is though around about 20 new applicants currently that we're processing. Uh, one of our slight challenges at the moment is due to COVID, we haven't been able to do the uh, sit-down examination and the face-to-face -face meeting, which we are an important part of our evaluation process. Because somebody may have the textbook knowledge, but may not be just a, the right a, able to impart their information in the right way to serve the members. So okay. that's an equally important part of it. We've deferred those until we come back in the spring. And there's, um, there's absolutely no way of doing that um, with working from home, unfortunately. It would, it, there are ways it could be done, but we, for the short delay we have, and when the fact is we don't have any particular crisis in the shortfall of inspectors at the moment. Most of our inspectors will be busy when we come back from the COVID lockdown, but it, it, they're capable of serving the fleet. And um, the, the simple fact is that the, um, the inspectors are um, in a... Uh, uh, are a real source of information. We need people that have a bit of experience. They've been around the aircraft for a while. While we have some people who join us in their 20s, they're quite exceptional. Yeah. Uh, the majority of our inspectors join us in their 40s and it'll be 20, uh, 20 plus years. Do you want me to answer Keir Williams? Yeah, well, uh, I was, yeah it, it, it popped one of the, one of the guys beside, behind the scenes popped, up, uh, popped that one up. And I think it's a, it's a good one because uh, I've, I've obviously been following the uh, approval of the first RB14. Uh, and like Keir says, it would be good to see LA help with the initial cost of approval for new types instead of it being the first builder. And I certainly know that the first builder of the 14 
Um, he he uh, took on his shoulders the cost of the extra flight testing um, with the CA with the secondary CA pilot uh, CA test pilot, um, and obviously that brings new project registrations with things like the RB14, which is clearly going to be a really popular type. Um, should be a benefit to the LAA. So, I, I agree with you. But actually, the permit first issue fee for the new type. Uh, and in fact, any subsequent aircraft thereafter is an, is only a small fraction of the hours that are spent. That is actually, but in fact, nearly all the engineering fees are we actually take a uh, a loss on funded by the membership revenues, because the simple fact is we want people to um, to develop new types, come up with new ideas, come up with new aircraft, and also through the mods process, put in new equipment uh, as is necessary. And none mm. of the fees that we have really cover the cost of. 400 and something thousand pounds worth of salary for our engineering team each year mm. and I, uh, so I in actual fact we're doing that already but what i'm i yeah. am going to do in in actually in the next few weeks is actually look at that funding stream for engineering and see where we go in the future yeah i, th I think he is probably his his question relates to the fact that um uh where a first type needs a secondary test flight so after the laa test flight has taken place the 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 approval via one of the approved LAA um, test pilots. So that's that cost. I think is 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 not insignificant. So I'll I'll take a look at that. If Keir wants to drop me an email to um, office at laa.uk.com, uh, I'll take that up on and, and have a look at uh, his concern on that. Okay, fair enough. Excellent. Well, I'll move, move it along. Um, we're probably not going to have time for everything. I'll just uh, what what have we got to ask? um uh, doo -doo -doo. uh rjk983 asks uh could you ask steve about the future for nppl sseA and m holders uh we're we're banned from flying g reg aircraft and the only way we can upgrade our licenses is by paying thousands to carry out the same exercises we carried out when we learned to fly um i'm not quite sure how you're banned from flying a g reg aircraft if you're thinking about as a an nppl sseA at the moment the regulation which was forced upon us from Europe uh, precluded them from flying um, what were EASA certificated aircraft. And we, we had dispensations that ran on for a couple of years. They expired last May. Mm. Um, the, the problem is, in order to get all that huge raft of EASA legislation, and it's for airliners, balloons, you name it, um, through the CAA basically put one job lock through Parliament and transferred it in one great lump from EASA to the Air Navigation Order. So effectively, we're bound by EASA rules, but they've just got CAA written on the front of them. Yeah. Now, what the lawyers are doing, and this is why there's a bit of a hold up on this at the moment, is they're picking the way through all of these rules on flight crew licensing, on medical self declarations, etc., and picking out either via a derogation or by a change in the law. Uh, how we're going to get back to where we want to be with national licensing. And I've got a bit of sympathy with the CAA guys here. They are working literally. I mean, one was on the phone to me only less than an hour ago, still work, still working in his office. So they're not putting a lack of effort in here, but there's a huge raft for them to go to. And, of course, while we're grounded, PPLs in particular are, um, are, down, are down near the bottom of the pile. And yeah. what we are trying to do is, though, is trying to give some sense of security. The first post covid review meetings start again on the 23rd and we'll be we're, we're part of that as is bmaa as is aopa and we'll be putting our cases forward pretty strongly in those fantastic right. cool I'm just, well, i think I'm that's just up and put my two pennies worth in here and say yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. funnily enough the the french managed to change the managed to sort out all their brevet de base people and you can still do it today with a simple form it's just that we didn't have the willpower or the skill or the negotiating whatever it was to get it done and this thing's been dragging on for a couple of years the ca could have fixed it but they didn't fix it and it's a bit like the old you know i got i got one of the original poo brown licenses um which i had to pay 86 quid for or something to upgrade to an yasa license and now i see another consultation that says I've got to pay another 77 quid probably to transfer my EASA CA FCO license back to a CA FCO license because the CA won't let me fly a Part 21 G Reg aircraft on my Pooh Brown license, which they gave me for a lifetime bloody years ago. They just need to sort the whole lot out properly, be bold, be sensible, do it properly, do it once. Stop mucking around and bypass the bloody lawyers. Anyway, sorry, I'm off. <laughs> 
<laughs> there we go. He's, he's, he's got to pop in. But uh, yeah, well, that's good. Uh, well, let's just finish up with one last question. Uh, Cloudhound asked, uh, does the LAA plan to try and wrest any heritage aircraft from CAA? So the ones where similar types are already under LAA permit to fly or have type certificates held by dubious type certificate holders abroad? Was item one on my list when I took over this job in September 2015. And I regret to say I haven't got one iota further forward. Uh, again, this is a case of priority. It's a case of time. Um, but what the, the problem there is actually it wasn't EASA. It was the ICAO implemented this. And the CAA, in order to, um, uh, to, to, to be able to enable the two Piper – I've got – there's two Piper Cubs in a hangar at Sywell. Mine's one. It's on a permit to fly. I'm doing yeah. all my own work on it. The other one's a C of A aeroplane. It's own, the only reason is because no one registered it quick enough before the ICO regulation came in in 1988. It's utterly ridiculous. We have situations where people on NPPLs are cheerfully flying around or would have been cheerfully, cheerfully flying around in 200 horsepower Scottish aviation bulldogs with bendy props. And uh, yet they're not allowed to fly a Beagle Pop 100. I mean, it's ludicrous. We want to try and move it forward. And I think actually once all the EASA dust has settled, that could easily be a key item on the next stage of the CAA workers. Great stuff. Good. Okay, well, let's get Ian back in to give you your score. Thanks for asking, uh, answering those questions, Steve. Not a problem. My pleasure. Okay, Steve. Um, so I'm going to have to give you a provisional score here. Um, oh, no. the, I know. Okay, well, provisional, I'm going to have to take that's, that's, just like my, that's just like my skills test. <laughs> I'm going to have to take this away to the uh, Right Stuff Adjudication Committee while we discuss a couple of your answers. Um, but but your right your right stuff score is sixty sixty percent right stuff. Um, but it, it Ooh. could well Ooh. a couple Ooh. of answers that I've had to take a judgment on that could take you back to seventy five percent. But I need I, I do need to check with my place. my fellow adjudication. It's ba it's basically um, I think we I'm, we could I'm probably. Not sure. I'm not sure we even, I even I'm not sure I even knew we had an adjudication committee. <laughs> Ed, I've just made that up. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the rally judging team, Ian. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Um, basically, uh, see, normally we'd have penalised you for flying around controlled airspace, but given that you've got nothing in your aeroplane, that might be we, we might be able to allow that. So we, so I, I think you can give. We, we yeah. let's be kind. Let's be positive. Let's be upbeat. In this 2021, is going to be significantly better than 2020, and let's give you a provisional 75. percent How about that? Right. I, I, I think Steve is just is Steve's keeping clearer technology so the drones can't find him. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> right, let me go on that. So there you go. Thank you very Great. much. Okay. Well, uh, uh, stick Great. around You're in the well. stick around in the green room, Steve. We'll probably have you back a bit later, but uh, I think we're going to move on to Fantasy Hangar. <laughs> Dave, Dave looks surprised to be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. So, uh, fancy hanger, um, as we've been uh, talking 600 kilogram microlites with Steve, we decided that we'd pick our favorite 600 kilogram microlite from uh, those uh, from uh, ones that we'd seen at places like Aero. So, um, so who's first? I, I'm, I'm first on this particular list. You sound uh, confident too. I, I was confident when I picked this, I thought I, there's no way that no one's going to beat me on this, but I have to say, there's some donking choices out there anyway mine is the uh, ul 600 explorer um why it runs on a nice uh, it, it's just very simple i just i, I just quite fancy uh, going out and having fun and flying around a bunch of farm strips in the evening airplane you know i've got the 182 which which tours me lots and lots of places and this just seemed like kind of fun and it you know whether it you know frankly whether it's this or kit fox or, or something along those lines uh rounds there's, there's plenty of them like it but i think the chance of having a 600 kilogram tail dragging rough ground short trip microlite is just a whole lot of fun and there you go that's that's my choice so vote for me thank you very much excellent good choice you. Uh, dave is next oh all oh, right dave. dave talk us through this surprising choice of yours <laughs> well just look <laughs> at it look at it this is a luscom eight in fact, it's the Model 8 LSA, and uh, this one we spotted at Aero a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, things, have, you know, it things have changed a little bit in the background here, because this was a this was a German company called Luscom Germany, um, and they were trying to put this together as a 600 kilogram microlate, 
and they put it put a um, a german d motor engine in there now that's the one i originally chose but then i went back and checked and luscombe has changed ownership yet again um it's been it's been doing this for few, every few years and in the states luscombe there's a company called um called luscombe aircraft corporation that uh, they've re re revived the old name and they they're putting the 8f the final luscombe 8 into production as an lsa it looks exactly like that um but it's it's it's, it's a modern build aircraft but it's just built the same way Could be so, right. Good so i've decided i want one of those wow cool okay yes. Very nice. excellent who's next i think johnny's next right oh, okay. well i'm going to go speeding past you dave in my black shape prime <laughs> <laughs> powered by a 912 is it'll do 160 knots flat out it's pre-preg carbon fiber i've gone purely on aesthetics it's gorgeous it's a typical italian it's high quality beautiful Re reliability might be questionable and it's probably completely <laughs> impractical you can't say that, I'll I'll say that. <laughs> Do, johnny was referring to vintage italian motorbikes in that previous statement and yeah. cars. <laughs> <laughs> mainly alfa romeos <laughs> there we go I, I think modern modern italian aviation microlights are excellent <laughs> that's yeah. the higher view but it's beautiful and it's like a baby pilatus pc21 I've got to say that is that's pretty nice. And if 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 wins were judged by people already having similar comments, uh, then uh, then I think you'd be a winner, Johnny. Um, yeah. However, there's still me to go, and I, I I've picked this this magic little thing, which is the ultralight concept stomp. It's full size, so it's a one to one replica of the stomp, but it's a micro light. Um, it's just a little bit too heavy at the moment to fit into the current rules, but 600 kg would see this perfectly um, work. Powered by Rotex 912 or a D motor, I just think this is magic. It's a bit of um, bit of fresh air flying, open air vintage, uh, open air fun with vintage looks. How about that? Unfortunately, Johnny's just going to leave me in his wake. <laughs> But that's all right. All of you should be going fast because it'd be being pursued by all the Italians. <laughs> Last week it was the Ukrainians. This week the Ukrainians were after today. <laughs> this week, the Ita I, I think that might be worse, Johnny, if you've got the Italians after you. Yeah. Do, do you know what? I think this is the first time we've had a fantasy hangar when <clears throat> genuinely I would be super, super happy to own or fly any of the aircraft. They're all features. And I, I yeah. really think. I really think if we get if we can crack this six hundred kilogram micro light category, <clears throat> yeah, and give access to people in the UK, give people in the UK access to all sorts of beautiful, stunning aircraft, some some of which are here, then I think it, it stands a chance of just being a spectacular success. As um, Andrew Kennedy says, so long as the CIA don't screw it up, the future looks bright under six hundred kg. Andrew Kennedy, I'll have you know that. The CA can produce a better circle, and 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 it will be rounder than the the round that everyone's had before. That's it. Uh, Clearer cloud says Johnny's little wheel makes yeah. it wrong. Yeah, but yeah. you've got to admit Johnny's little wheel is cool because it's retractable, and so <laughs> it's just he, he has to park around the back of the hangar when he arrives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, before everyone else. So um, yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's six hundred kg. So fancy hangar will just say it's a clear win for the UK if it all works out. If, if we, well, it's not just the UK, is it? There's lots of other places. That's it. Yeah. We, we don't, sadly, sadly, we don't have a, a very much of an indigenous aircraft manufacturing industry. Um, but uh, yeah, no, fantastic. It's a clear win yeah. for aviation. Let's call it excellent. Yeah. Good. What's next? What's next? Events. Right, think, events. What's been cancelled this week? Well, aren't you going to have your big news, Ian? No, we're going to have what's been cancelled this week first. <laughs> No, right, okay, you. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right so um uh, there are some actual events it's not no events this week but coming up the uh, uh at old warden they're going to have the 75th um a 75th celebration of the chipmunk it, apparently it's 75 years since the first flight they've done 70 years before by the way but it, 75 years of the chipmunk so they're inviting all chipmunk uh, owners and enthusiasts to along along to old warden on the 22nd of may if you're an electric aircraft enthusiast, yeah, one, two. Okay, if you're an electric aircraft enthusiast, Electrify in Switzerland is going ahead. That's going to be later in the year, 11th to 12th of uh, September. Um, another good event, some are, events that are happening at the moment 
are the Gasco. Um, they, they used to run safety evenings. Obviously, they can't do that anymore. So Gasco is going to run safety webinars, and uh, they've just started. They started this week. The next one is at a um, uh, uh, flying training school at Oxford called uh, Leading Edge Aviation. Um, that's on the 10th of February. If you look on the Flyer website, there's a story all about it, given, and it's got the dates coming up and how you can how you can get involved. What's not happening, apparently, is uh, Aero Expo. This is the UK's version of Aero. That uh, it happens to free of Shuffle. This this is the UK's version. It was going to happen this year at Cotswold. Unfortunately, because of you know, you know what, it's been cancelled and now will be held in 2022. So that's the wow. events. So there Over you to go. you, Ian. Over to me. Okay, well, basically, we've been having, uh, well, for quite a while now, we, we, we jokingly and sadly have been calling this kind of, you know, what's not happening this week because, you know, frankly, there's everything being cancelled, understandably, and that's just a little bit grim. So we decided um, that come the spring, we're going to have a, uh, a week's Fly Alive Festival, a festival of aviation. It will be virtual, and it won't be as good as flying in, and it won't be as good as seeing people face-to-face, -face, but that's not the world we live in right now, and it's certainly not the world we're going to be living in in April completely freely. So we're going to have a festival of aviation. We're going to look at training. We're going to look at industry characters. We're going to look at manufacturers. We're going to have some fun. It's just going to be a great, fun online festival for the whole aviation industry starting in in the uk so uh we'll be more details about that as we come so please come and join us and uh when we've got a date which is eh, on the verge of getting a date shortly uh stick it in your diary and make sure you'll be there thank you very much there you go and oh yeah last thing sorry uh two more things steve uh i think you can still hear us but but we can't hear you so let's let's hope that steve and you can come and join us at the virtual aviation festival with the laa and we can get some laa stuff going on that would be great and if anyone out there is watching this there you go bring steve in thank you very much and anyone out there in industry wants to get involved uh drop me a line and get in touch and we can get that sorted out as well so uh that's a double us thumbs can... up for me yeah thanks Sounds very like much. great a great way to start the i know lots of people don't believe in the flying season but you know hopefully april will usher in some some uh, uh, lots of good months of, of just good weather and more freedoms and lots of just getting out and flying absolutely and while i'm while i'm while i'm here um the on the gasco uh, safety evenings the virtual safety evenings um someone from gasco you know let's we'll get in touch with you or you can get in touch with us let's put a virtual safety evening on for the flyer club uh, an online one we'll run it through something like Streamyard or whatever and let's let's get that sorted out in the next couple of weeks as well sounds good there's lots of lots of love for the gasco safety safety uh, seminars online uh, in the comments so uh, clearly popular mm. good yeah. good well Great. well it johnny. must be it must be johnny in the club Where's yes. the button? johnny <laughs> <laughs> that will never get old <clears throat> all right thank you Ian so for club members many of our re-landing vouchers are moving shifting to later in the year so you're not going to miss out on them so don't worry about that if the concept of a free landing voucher is completely alien to you then that's because you're not in the flyer club so join head to flyer.co.uk and find out more and for anybody out there Send us pictures, send us your stories of what you've been up to or what you're planning to be doing once lockdown ends, because we want to hear about it. Well, that's good. Yes. There you go. I've just, oh, by the way, I've just had an idea for Fly Alive. Oh, no more. No more yeah. ideas. <laughs> Instead of a coconut shy, we yeah. could have a drone shy. A drone shy. <laughs> Oh, I like that idea. I, I think it's illegal to float. Well, it's probably going to be. Well, the drones will just they'll just all chase after you. There'll be this big Dave will be running off and there'll be this this swarm noise. And Dave, gets... <laughs> you know what? I'm going to I'm going to say a word in defense of drones here. And, and it's not mm -hmm. uh, drones are with us and drones are going to be with us. And there's, I was listening to a thing today and, and someone yeah. was predicting that uh, not too far in the future, or they may be 10 years in the future, they'll, you know, for every commercial aircraft that takes off, there'll be 100 drones taking off. Um, yeah. So clearly drones are going to be a thing. The difference is, if you look at countries like France, France, France have got the project where they're looking at it called You Together, and it's, it's, it's trying to come up with an integrated thing that allows drones to, to coexist, to integrate with general aviation and other airspace users in Class G airspace. And, you know, frankly, it's not a bad thing if we integrate with drones properly. It's a great thing. What's a bad thing is the way that it's being approached by some of the people at the moment, which is frankly just 
poor and and we can't you know we, we need to get this let's let's do it properly let's do it together and let's do it openly and honestly and let's not pretend to do stuff that we should really be doing properly let's just do it and do it together so there you go yeah. that's my sorry i'm having a bit of a night tonight I'm gonna get yeah, you're, 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 gonna, you're gonna need to lie down in a dark room later. But earlier on, David Eads said, "Can we send? Can I send Ian some of my blood pressure pills?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't need them. I'm, I'm relaxed. There we go. Anyway, that must be. It's it, go to your Zen zone. I'm, I'm in my Zen zone, and I think at that point it is now twenty past eight. I would like to thank everyone who's joined us. I see there's some really good numbers tonight, so thank you for that, Steve. Thank you for for joining us. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> um, Simon, thank you for joining us earlier and delivering the weather. Um, Ed, Dave, and Johnny, thank you, and thank you everyone. We look forward to seeing you next week. We've got another special guest next week, Ivan MacGyver from Cirrus, who's the uh, product director. I think that's her latest job title for for the Cirrus uh, SR line. She's a, she's a great laugh and a great pilot, Sir, um, yeah. Ivy. So we'll we'll talk to her next week. Um, and look forward. Have a great safe week, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. And Take don't care. Bye bye. If you're watching bye. it on YouTube, give us a like. Bye bye. <laughs>